Well, friends, we got so much stuff we could be working on, but we're going to revisit this tether. And if you don't remember how that went, go back about a month ago or so in the videos, and you'll see that I bought some stuff on auction time. I'm trying to help out a auctioneer friend who is just getting started with auction time and got all this hay equipment. And so I thought, hey, little two basket tether. But then when I brought it home after that video came out, some viewers keyed me into some sadness. And that's where we are here. So we'll talk more about that right after this. Welcome back. If you haven't seen my videos before, I'm Rusty Oliver Man. This is a little New Holland, I don't even remember the number now. It's been so long the tongue is over here, a 163. The problem we have with it is it originally was a four basket tether and someone cut the wings off. Well, the sad part about that is, is that then the machine runs backwards. So in order to make this run the right way, if that's even going to be possible, step one is to totally disassemble it and last time we got this far but we couldn't get these hubs off and then the other day when i went to move it because i thought we're going to heat those hubs and get them off of there i found that there was in fact a larger roll pin still in the piece and what i had drove out must have been a second roll pin that someone put through the center to help so i managed to get it apart and so I have to be careful because there is a flat needle bearing in there and then some spacers to help get your, I guess you would technically call this a thrust bearing. And I'm sure that I'm not going to be able to do this in a way where I don't end up losing that. But basically what you do then is pull these whole stars off. And that will answer some of your other questions that people had in the comments about why couldn't I do this or why couldn't I do that. Believe me, I looked at every option before this totally disassembling it all the way option. So let's pull this apart and I will explain more. I had it up farther earlier. Come on. Come off of there. Let me love you. Come on. Jeez, that's a pain in the canoe. Oh, it's full of bearings, which we are going to lose. We shouldn't have trapped ourselves like we did. Happy to see me, or is that a tether between your legs? Well, can it be both? Can it be both? Okay. Hopefully, no more stuff falls out. I don't think it will. Well, I say that, but. Okay. That should be the last one of those. So that will go with this set here. That is actually the outer, yeah. Well, darn. All right. Now, I had multiple people say, just flip-flop end for end and then it'll fix your problem no it won't because the bevel gear is in the same spot on both of them and they're straight cut teeth that has absolutely zero to do with the direction they turn all the direction turning is right in here because your bevel gear there is on one side of your input shaft and if you flip it to the other side, it should turn it the opposite way. And that's what we're trying to do, is see if that's going to even be possible. 
uh, yeah, because it just may not be, you know, it may not, that's why we took the cover off of that was to see if there was a recessed place for the bearing because opposite of the thing is a bearing in there. You'll see when we get that far, but that's why we have to do what we do. There's no way to do this without total disassembly. So that's why we're doing what we're doing. And I'm really trying to figure out now how I want to go about this so I don't lose all this stuff. I need to get a piece of wire and tie that together because I'm going to lose all those little shims if I don't. And you're going to say magnetic tray. Well, I got magnetic trays full of all kinds of stuff. Let's see if we can't relieve this one of its pieces. Come on. Sure. Well, let's learn from our mistake and do the exact same thing. Uh-huh. Let's handle. We put it right in front of everything that we need to wear. Oh, look at that. I got rocks in it. Now I've got to clean that out extra good. Awesome. Consequently, while we're talking about this, this has a groove in it. When I pulled these off, an o-ring or what was left of an o-ring came out so we're gonna have to do that before we put her back together it would really be handy to have the loader as a table again so i think that's what we'll do all right so what's next well according to what i've gathered from the parts book these are held on with a snap ring and so we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to pull these off i do not see the snap ring anymore so i'm thinking that that has already went away long ago however what i do see is an extremely rusty thing and i don't know if we'll be able to gear puller that off of there or not they gave us a nice lip, but I probably need to just bite the bullet and set up the, I have a gigantic bearing splitter. That might be the way to go. Then also, if we're thinking that this is gonna work, I think we're gonna toss this piece and we're gonna get this off of here because this is useless now. That was for the wings and we don't need it anymore. It'd be nice to figure out how that came out of there neatly but at this point, I'd say a torch will take that off of there real handy. But if the whole thing's going to go to the scrap iron, then we probably won't even fool with that. But you get what I'm saying. So, do we want to try the little puller first and see? Maybe because it's easier to get to and it's easier to take apart. Ah, oh, this usually lives in the service truck. <laughs> Something in here ought to do it. I'm not sure which thing it'll end up to be, but one of them should. I'm thinking let's try a three jaw something first. If I have to use the bearing splitter, I will, but then I have to find my own bolts, I think. There's something about that bearing splitter I can't remember. I don't think I have all the pieces to this set. I know it didn't come with them and I had to order them. Those are super long jaws though. Is that what we want? Maybe. I think it'll do it. It's just a matter of takes so much setup to do this. It's kind of frustrating. Two thousand years later. Alright. 
between these cows driving me nuts and the pullers of sadness. I finally got that off of there. I found the combination that would do it, which was two small bearing splitter that would actually fit in there because any of the others I had were hitting the wall. Couldn't get it in there. So I used that one because it was pretty well wore out. I actually somewhere, yeah, I have another one to replace it brand new. So I saved that one for jobs like this where it's going to get mangled a little. But I got that pulled off of there. I don't, however, I do not uh, see a key. Can I do this without throwing it on me? I'm not sure what that is in there. Because that definitely won't go through there. I don't think that's the size of the shaft. I might be wrong. Maybe it is that size. It jumps up as it goes through there maybe. Yeah, that might be right. It's hard to tell when everything's covered with crap. <clears throat> but what I gotta do now is take it, uh, you know what I'm saying. I gotta take her the other side loose too. I can't just do one side unfortunately because I don't think I can do one side, unfortunately. Maybe I can. I gotta pull it totally in half. I mean, totally, uh, you know what I'm saying. I don't know. I don't really know what's gonna take place here. I just know that whatever I do is going to be wrong. It's starting to get dark out here, so we won't be able to see very much more anyway. But at least I figured out that trick. So I really now need to put it back laying across here instead of up in the air because now that I know that this will work, it's a lot more handy to work on it, not above my head. So let me see about getting it laid back down on there and we'll see what kind of daylight we still have. And if we have any, we'll try to pull it loose and just totally gut it, see what happens. There's our coupler, which you kind of got to have for shaft retention. I thought about cutting off the sh edges, but you need that to, for your puller to grab onto, so you don't want to do too much stupid stuff. The name of the game here is evenness. Sure. Whoa! You wild horse. Look at that. That one came off with, without any struggle at all. Oh, there's the answer to our question. I thought that looked awfully big. There is a spacer. So, I'm almost guaranteeing you that this one is stuck. So, what I will have to do is probably heat that <clears throat> before we're done. But I could, in theory, take this leg off and see if that's going to work for us. I wonder if I could cheat and just take off. Uh, of course, now it's not going to, you know, lay down in a way which would be super handy for me. But what I'm wondering is if I could just take them loose at the gearbox or do I have to take it loose each section, each piece at a time? I hope I don't. I hope I can cheat and take a little bit. I'll explain that in a minute if that didn't make sense. All right, the bearing is behind the gear. There should be nothing here. So I think I can take these other bolts out here and just slide this all off as one. The next question is, what size were those? You know? I think they all were all different. I don't think we had any, any fasteners that were alike. So I'm going to have to 
figure that out. All right, we are back the next day. I just tapped that off of there. There's a bearing in the end of there and that bearing, I don't know if it was holding a little bit, but here's our gear. We can pull it up out of there so it doesn't get lost. But I don't think that there's any spacers or anything. Uh, I really need to get this extra thing off of here before we go back together because it is a pain. And I did not have any success at that a while ago. So we might just have to use the old heat wrench and get rid of it after a while. But I don't know. We'll sort that out later. I really want to continue with this. I should probably at some point mark should mark which side all that gear and stuff's on because I just know what's going to happen is I'll end up forgetting <laughs> and wouldn't that be terrible if we ended up putting it back together the exact same way so that's half friend now what has to take place is do the same thing to the other side because I got to have it totally apart uh, and flip it side for side. Although what I could do, although what I could do to avoid, because why wouldn't we want to just avoid struggles in life, you know? I could pull the ring of bolts out here and just flip the gearbox around, right? Couldn't I do that side for side? This is the paradox I ran into when I was thinking about it earlier. I'm not sure if that'll work. I don't think it will. The shaft has to be flipped, but everything else has to stay where it is because everything else is special in relationship to itself. So the gearbox cannot be flipped around and bolted to that leg or it won't match up right. So I have to take it totally apart, which is not what is fun, but that's the way it is. So, what to do? Well, I'm going to have to, I got trouble right here in River City, friends. If you remember, this side, that collar, is looking pretty stuck on there and I'm betting that there is going to be some uh, you know what I'm saying there's gonna have to be some things happening here you know like heating that collar off of there we can clean it up a little and try but I just don't I don't foresee that that's gonna work we're getting so many pieces here that I'm just worried that we're going to totally forget what we're doing. See, the other side, that just came off. It just tapped right out of there. Didn't even tap it. It just came off by hand. Got to pull that moon, and then that shaft would probably come out this way. That's what I figured. Oh, that's just a flat, like a round-sided key. I thought it was a moon key. I did the other one in the dark, so yeah. This be a Such a cleaning. How are we coming with this gearbox? I really need to. It's a low 
motor isn't a perfect work surface, but it does help keep stuff up in my uh, line of sight, so I don't have to be leaning over all the time. go through there all the way it should I don't see any reason why that wouldn't go through there all the way I think I just don't have quite a strong enough what fell out of there okay the key fell out of the center which is fine it's laying in a chain now because why wouldn't it? So we got to get that shaft all the way out. There's just no way around it. I'm, I'm just going to end up having to totally disassemble it. Yes, in theory, it should pull out of there totally. But in practice, it's not going to let me do that. If I just take it off, then it's going to solve some of that issue for me. Luckily, everything is moving easily. So, that's nice because when stuff doesn't do that, that's when we have trouble. Now, the absolute only way that this is actually going to work is if we can get that bearing out and put it in this side over here. And we also have to find out, so I guess we have to take it apart anyway. So that side had a seal in it. We got to find out if the ends of the tube are the same, that we could put a seal in that side and put the bearing over here. And if that's the case, then we're in good shape. So I do have to take this loose too so that I can finally figure it out. <laughs> I think it's going to work. We're going to have to do a a lot of cleanup here before we can even remotely get this to go. I mean, there's so much crap on everything. The gear goes through the bearing. Okay, that's cool. Now, so with the way that's made, I am not... <laughs> I have to take every piece loose. This is nuts. All right, friends, here's the moment of truth. We have the bearing. I finally got it out of there. It's kind of a trick to work on this gearbox. But we're going to flip this around to this side. Like this. And then this bearing is going to go over here. And it's going to work it will fit in there so we just have to get that all reassembled flip the shaft over and then put our two sides back on the way that they were and then we are good to go it's gonna work so I should probably clean some of this up but probably won't I don't know yeah let me get some some stuff here but we need to clean because we got way too much crap and it's making things very hard to work on. So, yeah. 
But that's what I needed to know. I needed to make sure that the bore in the gearbox was the same from side to side. And since it is, that means we'll be able to make this happen. I also need to put this together today because if I leave this sit apart very long, I'm gonna forget what all went where. And there is a lot of pieces. I also took some stuff loose that I wouldn't have had to. But live and learn. And you're going to say, replace the bearings while you're in there. Well, that feels excellent. And it's been running continuously in grease. So, I don't think that that's necessary. Sure. Then I need to do some more research here as far as what the ends of these tubes look like because we're going to have to, well first of all we need to do this before we forget and do something dumb. I need to do now I need to compare this out of steel and figure out what's going on with this the seal was actually in the tube I'm gonna have to track down a seal going to be our I wouldn't be opposed to reusing this one if I could get it out of there in a, in a nice fashion because it looks excellent and it really does not much of anything when you got it full of grease if you had it full of oil it would be a different story as long as we can get that seal out of there and swap it to the other side we should be able to just start cramming this thing back together. All right, this project is coming along. Now, although I was hoping that maybe this would be one video and it would be back running again, I have decided against that. First of all, I need to get some more hardware. It was missing bolts, as you recall. Also, I do not have the snap rings that go on the outside of here. And uh, while I reassembled this side, the key that was in there wasn't the greatest, and now I can't find the one for this side. So I think I'm going to order two keys, two snap rings, get some bolts, and then the next time we'll finish putting this together, and hopefully we'll see it running again. I have to get some of the gearbox grease, too, so we can make this happen. Uh, but I got the center section bolted together again, and I got this wing bolted on. The shaft slides freely, so I'll be able to change that no problem. But uh, she's come along, friends, you know, and that's pretty impressive. I'm glad this is going to work. There's no reason why it shouldn't at this point. Everything's the way it needs to be. And yeah, we put it back together. We should have a tether that actually teds. 
the right direction so we will call this one here i will get the necessary supplies and in the next ordeal we will finish putting it together and we should have us something and yeah for a very low price i don't remember what i gave for this tether but it wasn't that much i'll have to go back and watch the other video but for a fraction of the cost of a regular two basket i will have a two basket that works so we will leave this here and i'll see you in the next one